So today, what we'll be talking about is kind of a spin-off of the first webinar. So in the first webinar, we talked about what is what model-based definition, how do we create and use model-based definition in Creo? And today we'll be talking about how do we take that model-based definition and use it to create a model-based enterprise. So we're gonna be talking about some specific MBD use cases for the enterprise. And you can see them listed in our agenda here. Product lifecycle management, manufacturing, service, and quality. <clears throat> so to start, I would like to recap just a little bit of what we talked about the first time in kind of the definition of MVD. And really the definition can be described by this phrase that you see here on our screen, where the 3D model becomes the single source of truth for our product and manufacturing information. Now, typically what we see in industry today is that we have two sources of truth. And those two sources are not only the model, but also a, a 2D drawing. And in most cases, this 2D drawing represents the legal asset for this product information. Now, the goal of MBD is to get rid of that 2D paper print process and contain all of our information for our product and manufacturing inside the model itself using 3D annotations. Now, what are some of the benefits of MBD and what we can expect to see once we implement model-based definition? So once we have our fully 3D annotated model with correctly applied tolerancing and annotations, um, we can expect to see things like faster product development, faster manufacturing and inspection, and reduced errors and non-conformances. And this is backed up by some of the feedback that we've seen from, from some of our PTC customers. And from that data, we see up to 40% faster documentation creation, 60% reduction in first article inspection time, and up to 90% less product nonconformances. So just from this data alone, we can see that MVD is very powerful. It, um, it makes the product development process more efficient and also increases the quality of our products that we manufacture. All right, so model-based definition and model-based enterprises. So I like to consider model-based definition as kind of like the, the digital DNA of our, of our model. So this data that's contained in our model-based definition is critical for enabling a model-based enterprise. Now, a model-based enterprise is an organization that uses this model, this model-based definition for the purpose of downstream activities. So commission, operation, manufacturing, quality, and service of our products. But oftentimes people question, how do we build that bridge between our model and our enterprise? And one of the great solutions that, that PTZ provides is the PLM solution called Windchill. And I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with this, with this solution, but this PLM um, interface provides kind of that connection, that digital thread between our model, our manufacturing information to the different sections of our enterprise. Now, if you're not familiar with what PLM is, PLM stands for Product Lifecycle Management. And like we said, Windchill is the PTC product for PLM. And PLM is basically a solution that manages all of the information and all the processes at every step of a product lifecycle across globalized supply chains. So up here on the screen, I've, I've just labeled a few capabilities of the many that come with Windchill. Um, that kind of directly are influenced by model-based definition. So the first one being data management. So iterations, um, changes, versions of our, of our data, of our models, engineering change management, taking that model and using it throughout the change management process and workflow, taking those models and configuring bill of materials for bill of material management. So taking our CAD assembly, um, transforming that into an engineering bill of material and then into a manufacturing bill of material or a service bill of material, for example. And then taking those parts and bill of materials and creating different processes from them. For example, manufacturing process planning. So with this, with the MVD 
and product lifecycle management, we can really connect all of our information to all sections of our enterprise. Now I'm gonna talk a little bit about some of these in specific. And the first one is manufacturing. And there's a few connections between model-based definition and manufacturing. And the first is with our model-based definition models, um, as long as they're correctly annotated, they are machine readable. So a machine cannot understand the English, English language, right? It can understand models and use that information to perform its necessary functions. And as long as we have our annotations semantically defined inside of Creo, it'll allow for that communication to our machines. And when I say semantic definition, I'm talking about the annotations and how they're referenced to the actual geometry contained inside of our model. And I'll go over that during the demonstration at the end as well. Now, along with this, we also have, like we said, bill of materials, for example, a manufacturing bill of material. Now using these bill of materials, we can create process plans in Windchill. So we can allocate our model-based definitions to different processes, to different operations inside of Windchill, to eventually get to digital work instructions that are also tracked and managed inside of the PLM system. Now the second section that is, is heavily um, influenced by model-based model definition is quality. And whenever I talk about model-based definition and quality, I always think it's important to note that when we have those two sources of truth being combined into only one source of truth, we're going to see an increase in quality. And we have data to back that up as well. So if you think about it, if we have a model as well as a print, and we don't have any great way of checking whether those, those two um, entities are exactly the same, we're going to have more nonconformances. So on the left-hand side of the screen here, you can see an example of a, a product that had a nonconformance, had an error in production because of those two sources of truth, where we have the model, which was correctly geometrically created and managed. But when we, when we transfer that model to our engineering print, um, there was an error in that print where we have a through hole that was not supposed to be there. So these nonconformances will definitely be reduced when using model-based definition. Now, the next area of quality has to do with inspection and taking measurements. Um, so a lot of companies use CMM machines and a lot of the modern day CMM machines don't use prints for programming these measurements. They use 3D models. So if we have a model that is not configured, that's not verified um, because the 2D print is our asset, um, we may see some, some difficulties in that trade-off between engineering and inspection. And then finally, we also have the ability to track and manage annotations that are connected to our model-based definition inside of Windchill. And there's a few different things we can do with these annotations. We can utilize them for um, manufacturing processes in Windchill. We can use them for quality initiatives in Windchill and things along those lines. <clears throat> and then finally, um, MBD is, is really closely connected with service operations as well. So if we have a, uh, a model and we decide to add annotations that have to do with service operations to that model, we can use tools, animation tools like Creo Illustrate to give um, very uh, efficient work instructions and animations to help our service technicians complete their job in a more efficient way. So here I have a short video that kind of shows this power with MBD and Creo. So we have a servo, mo servo motor here that has its MBD 3D model annotations. <clears throat> and what we can do is we can create more annotations that have to do with service and operations. So for example, in this case, we're adding some torque specs to this servo motor as it's being assembled or serviced. And then we can use Creo Illustrate to create these animations to give our service technicians better insight in how to complete their job more efficiently.
Okay, so with that, I'll go ahead and get into the demonstration. And today we're gonna to be working with um, Creo and Windchill to kind of show you that connection between model-based definition and the enterprise. <clears throat> okay, so here I have um, the product that we're kind of be um, looking at in more depth today. And this is actually the, the part that we analyzed and created annotations for in the first part of this webinar. Um, so we have our part, it's actually a bracket. I believe it was casted and then machined to create the final product. And the whole goal of MBD is to take all of our product information and display it and capture it within the model. Now we do that through the use of combination states. So these combination states can be accessed through our view manager here. And you can see all of the combination states that go along with this model. And if we wanted to turn them off or on, we have the ability to add them to our tab display. And then when we go to publish this, whether that's to a 3D PDF, step file, or things like that, we can choose to publish them along with that um, export. Now in this specific example, we have different states that kind of show different information that has to do with this product. And this first page here shows some of the, the company information. We have um, our company address, company information here, an ITAR notice, as well as some proprietary information um, notices as well. And as I scroll through here, you can see that we have different states that kind of represent different parts or different information that has to do with our model. So for example, in our titles, we can see we have design signatures, um, who it was approved by, and when, um, who was the checker, who was the engineer, and things like that. We also can see our properties in here. So we have our material information. And in these notes, similar to a 2D um, drawing in Creo, we can place parameters in here and manage those parameters, have them populate um, as they are referenced by this information. We also have general notes that you might see on a 2D drawing, except we've created our own combination state for MBD to showcase them. <clears throat> and the nice thing about MBD is that we can kind of break up our annotations into a more easy to interrogate way. So if you think about a 2D drawing, some of the issues that you may run into with 2D drawings is we can't fit all of the information we need on one single page. And we don't want to have multiple pages and things like that. But with the with the uh, combination states with model-based definition, we can break it up so that it's much easier to interrogate and much easier to understand. So here we have all of our datums that have to do with the manufacturing of this part. And then we also break up the different features. Um, so here we have the dimensions and tolerances for our base holes. We also have the same for our backside holes and this slot here, as well as our clevis holes and our clevis bore here. Now, one thing that I mentioned in the presentation was we want to make sure that all of these annotations are semantically defined, meaning they're correctly referenced by the geometry that they're um, associated with. So if we, for example, wanted to see the references or the semantic definition for this specific um, dimension here. We could grab our mini toolbar here and open up that semantic definition and see exactly what surfaces this definition is referenced by. Now you can see here that we have half of this surface is correctly defined and half is not. So in order to correctly um, fix this, what we can do is go over to our references and add that surface in as needed. And here we can see all of the references that have to do with this annotation here. So now if we take a look at the semantic query, we can see that in this kind of this purple color, all of our appropriate um, surfaces that are referenced by that annotation. Now, one cool thing that we can do inside of model-based definition and 3D annotations is we can designate certain annotations to be used for downstream activities. So in order to do that, let's grab this same dimension here and we can open up the options. 
And you'll see we have this designation option for this annotation. So as soon as we click on designate for this, um, as we check this into our PLM system, to our data management systems, it'll automatically bring that annotation in as part of this product information. We can also designate this as a control characteristic if we would like, and these control characteristics can be used for quality processes in windshield. Um, things like FMEAs or um, different quality processes. Okay, um, so here's our model, right? And really, in order to enable a model-based enterprise, we have to build that bridge with our PLM system. Now, the nice thing about Creo is that it works very well with, with Windshell PLM. So in Creo, we have the option to um, add that server, that Windshell server, and connect right to it inside of the Creo interface. So as long as we have our server set up correctly, we'll then see some different folders that populate um, that have to do with our PLM system. And the first one I'm gonna look at is our workspace. And in our workspace, I like to think of the workspace as kind of your, your sandbox where you want to place and manage your parts that you're working on or modifying. Um, it's kind of works outside of the data management system. Um, <clears throat> but it allows you to do things like check out parts, make changes, check them back into the data, data management system in order to control those versions and iterations. Now, along with that, we can also just open up the windshield common space and see um, all of our windshield information right from this embedded browser within Creo. <clears throat> now I'm gonna open up Windchill inside of our browser here and talk a little bit more about this part as it was checked into Windchill. So as we check in our parts to Windchill, as we make modifications and store them in our data management system, there's a few different ways to interrogate and um, look up the information that's associated with this part. And you'll see that as you're working in Windchill, um, Windchill is made for model-based definition. There are so many tools and visualizations that utilize models that it makes it very easy to work with our model-based definitions and our different products. So if I wanted to get more information about this part specifically, there's a few ways I can do that. And the first way is to kind of just hover over that little um, icon here for this visual representation, which will bring up kind of this thumbnail, thumbnail view. Now in this thumbnail view, you can see we have our, our visualization here as well as some attributes associated with this part. And I can actually spin this visualization around, take a better look at it, um, just as kind of a brief understanding of what this product looks like. But if I wanted to see more information about this, I could click on this view information button here. Now in here, we have more details associated with this part as it's stored in our data management system. We can see all of the attributes, um, what's the status, who it was last modified by and when, as well as just some general um, and object specific um, attributes as well. So you can see um, this parameter here that was saved to our model-based definition for the material of this part was automatically brought in to our PLM system. So it's that type of connection that really enables the, the model-based enterprise. So along with that, we can also check the full history, the product history of this part. So we can see all of the different versions, um, all of the different life cycle states that this specific part has been gone through, and as well as who has modified these different versions and iterations and when. As we look at our visualization, if we have any markups, any digital markups that are created, for this product, we could see them in here. So for example, instead of taking your print and sending it to an employee or a coworker, say, hey, can you check this out? Can you mark this up for me? We can do that all digitally with Windchill and Creo. We can open up our parts in Creo view, make digital annotations and communicate in more of a digital fashion. And then finally, I did want to show the, the model item structure here. 
where you can see we have all of our designated dimensions that have been brought in. Now these designated dimensions are brought in, they're uh, managed with every iteration that we check in, as long as they're designated, even the geometric tolerances that we've created and the datums. So these um, annotations can be used for downstream activities in Windchill as well. Now, in terms of um, accessing this, uh, this part here, uh, Windchill does a great job of controlling who has access to the parts, who has uh, the ability to view different parts and model-based definitions. So if we open up the team for this specific product context here, we can see all of the roles and members of this team. So in here, we can designate um, different users to different roles. And in these different roles, there's going to be different actions that they're allowed to do with the data in the system. So for example, if we have a manufacturing engineer, we don't want the manufacturing engineer to, to deal with our engineering model-based definition. We want them to deal with our model-based definition that's been released, placed in the release state. That's the type of access control that Windchill can provide, right? So we don't have that confusion. We don't have that uh, miscommunication with our access to our information. Okay, um, we're kind of gonna kind of change gears here and talk a little bit about how uh, model-based definition can be used for um, different workflows in Windchill, um, specifically for change management. So right now I'm logged in as a user named Pat, and Pat is a product, a product manager for a discrete manufacturing company that manufactures snowmobiles. And on his homepage in Windchill here, you can see that he has his workflow tasks up here at the top. And one of these workflow tasks that he's accepted is to review this change notice task. So as we open this up, we can see that this task is currently under review. We can see instructions that have to do with this task. So his job is to review this task that has been done by one of his engineers. And this task has to do with revising and redesigning a seat support weldment for our snowmobile. If we open up the process for this workflow, we can see right now we're in the review stage. So Pat's job is to basically conduct this this um, orange portion here where he's going to say, okay, everything looks good. We can complete and finish this or something needs to be changed. We need to rework this in some way. So as we look at the actual task, we can see in the process that this task has been completed by Dave, the design engineer, right? And now uh, Pat's job is to review this task. So inside of the details, we're going to have an affected and a resulting object. And this is where our model-based definition kind of ties in. So um, for this task, right, we have our affected object, we've made our changes, and now we have our resulting object. And Winchell does a very good job of providing us with tools to digitally um, review this information. So you can see this little icon here that says compare and Creo view. So we'll open this up in our compare Creo view tool. And Creo view, like we mentioned last time, is our lightweight viewable tool that we can use inside of Windchill to interrogate parts without needing that um, native authoring application for Creo. So as Pat's job is to um, review the changes that have been made to this part, he can bring in the old part as well as the new part into this one single page and review some of the um, things that have been changed with this product. And you can see here we have all of our combination states as well inside of Creo View that we can use and leverage to investigate this change task. So as I click on our MBD1 combination state, I can go over here and I can select um, view for our um, original object here. So we can see some of the dimensions. And as I toggle these on and off, we can start to see some of the differences in these annotations between the two. 
So instead of having to um, print out two different prints and maybe place them side by side on your desk and try to manually um, redline them and scan them back into our system, we can do this all digitally use a lot, utilizing some of the windshield compare tools as well as Creo View. So once Pat has completed this review task, he can go back in here and say, you know what, everything looks good. We can go ahead and complete that task and send it throughout the workflow. So that was kind of an example of how MBD can be used in, in data management, and change management with engineering. Now we'll take a look at an example with manufacturing. All right, so here we have a engineering bill of material for this standard fuel system. And like I said, originally, um, Windchill does a great job of showing us this visualization with our model, with our uh, model-based definition, right? So we can see that we can spin this guy around as we choose the different parts of this assembly or this bill of material, they'll actually highlight in our visualization window. It's giving us a better idea of what we're actually looking at, give us, giving us more insight and visibility to the product that we're working on. Now, what we can do with this engineering bill of material is we can transform this into a manufacturing bill of material. So in order to do that, we would go down to open in bomb transformer, which is a automated tool that helps with that transformation. And in the end, we would get a manufacturing bill of material. So you can see this manufacturing bill of material looks a little bit different than our engineering bill of material. And there are for reasons for that. Um, in manufacturing, we might want to have different parts that have to do with phantom parts or bracket kits or things like that. So we have the ability to manage bill of materials inside of Windchill as well. <clears throat> now, once we have our manufacturing bill of material for our model-based definition, we can take that and allocate these parts to a process plan. <clears throat> so over here we can see we have our process plan and this process plan contains different operations. For this example, we have four different operations. The first one being build tank, second one press studs, third one building our seat, and then the fourth one and final one attaching our seat to our tank. Now, the nice thing about Windchill is that it allocates these parts inside of our manufacturing bill material um, to our operations inside of our procedure here. And in order to do that, we would just take these, drag them and drop them over to the right side. That has already been done in this case, but we can see all of these parts allocated to our certain operations. Now, along with our parts from our bill of materials, we can also bring in different resources. So we can bring in things like assembly work centers. So for example, if I look at the information for that, we actually have our physical CAD model of our assembly work center in, in Windchill. We can utilize this for our manufacturing processes. <clears throat> we can also bring in resources like assemblers, CAD models of actual people, CAD models of tools, for example, a hammer, right? We can create and manage all of these models inside of this PLM system. Now, once we have all of our parts, all of our resources connected, and actually one more here, we can see we have annotations, right? Our annotations that have to do with torque requirements, our critical characteristics that are part of our model-based def definition. We can also utilize those in our manufacturing processes in Winchill. Now, once we have all of our parts here, all of our resources, all of our annotations, um, what we can do then is we can generate work instructions for this manufacturing process. So in order to do that, I would just right click on the top level um, operating procedure here and generate these work instructions. So what it would do is then spit out these work instructions. Um, and you can see just how detailed we can get with these work instructions in Windchill. 
it'll automatically bring in our allocated parts, our allocated resources that we set up in those operations. And we can use Creo and Creo View to create representations for our model-based definitions. So we can create images similar to this, where we have our actual model of our assembly line. We have our actual parts that have been allocated to this operation, as well as the annotations that go along with them. So as I scroll through here, you can see just how detailed we can get with these different operations in our automated work instructions in Windchill. All right, um, so that's really all I had for the second part of our webinar here today. I hope you guys found some valuable information in how we connect model-based definition to the enterprise using PLM systems like Windchill.